Well, if you are watching this right now and you're saying to yourself, boy, this guy Sam has got it going on. I would tell you, you are not wrong. So this is where I'm staying for the weekend. I got my boathouse where the kids will be sleeping. <laughs> no, just kidding. And look at that beautiful lake. Uh, there's some muskies in there to be caught. And it is uh, October, late October. So water levels are a little bit down on this lake for some reason, but <clears throat> excited to go out and uh, see if we can put a couple of fish in the net. We've got a couple hours tonight and then part of tomorrow. So we'll see what we can do. Did you notice I didn't introduce myself in the intro? That's because everybody knows me. Fish, fish. Pike, northern pike. Didn't feel really that big anyway. So, there it is, shaking off at the boat. Fish number one, and it's not a muskie. That might be a muskie. No, I think it's another pike. There we go, little pike. Not the species we're looking for, but oh well. Pretty little fish. So one of the challenges, you could say, that I'm facing right now is that uh, all the weeds that were here in the summer are either gone completely or are pushed way back. Some of them aren't healthy at all, really. Uh, it's late October, so to be expected, to be honest, but it, the water's only 60 degrees. So, um, I've tried shallow tonight and I really haven't seen them. Might try a little bit of trolling here before we take off after day one. But certainly no shortage of pike. No shortage of pike. Didn't see any of them here in the summer, but man, they're all over the place right now. Alright, so when all else fails and the shallow bite isn't working, we go for the deep bite. So, here it is. My, uh... Magda Pro, it's an Okuma, uh, Star Jack Reel, and I uh, use this for trolling. So we got to go pick up dinner at a restaurant here off the lake, and um, so I'm going to troll my way over there, see if we can see if we can get some muskies deep here. So I'm going to cast this out, about 27 feet, that gets me about 30, and I'm going to put it... Uh, my little rod holder. We're gonna jerk troll with the other uh, other rod here and see what we can do. Okay, it's day two here. Got my daughter with me in the boat. Say hi, Annalie, wave. Nothing more important than teaching the future generation how to fish without catching me in the eye. So that's the game plan. Nice overcast morning, two days after a cold front. Who knows, could be hit or miss. Let's make it happen. Oh, oh my goodness! Keep it there, keep it there! Oh, Annalie! You, <laughs> you had a little hit! A little fish came up and grabbed your lure! That was so cool! That was super cool, Annalie! You almost caught one! I did! Yeah! I right there and, and saw one yeah! I caught a fish today! Did you get the fish? <laughs> no, I didn't. You're out fishing me right now.
Oh, so I should just let it sit and the muskies will come and grab it, do you think? Huh, all right. You just never know when you're gonna learn a thing or two from your forum. Right. Oh, the muskie got him! Oh, oh man! There he is again. Look at that. <gasps> there he is. Very bad. <laughs> that was one of the worst net jobs I've ever done. But it's in. And that's a 45, easy. giant 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 fish wow bigger than i thought definitely 45 plus Whew. yep 46 and a quarter oh my ha <laughs> ha Wow. First of all, I gotta give a shout out to somebody. Brad uh, Koopmas, is that how you pronounce your last name? Koopmas? Dude, 3D printed gliders. <laughs> this is the future right here. He made this for me. Uh, it's honestly a prototype, and uh, <laughs> but you know what? It doesn't need a lot of fixing because it brought in a really big fish. Uh, I was just fishing the deep weed edge, honestly, and uh, 
just slowly working this thing, you know, tap, tap, pause, and man, he just came up and hammered it. It was such a cool strike, so. Oh man, I'm just all fired up right now. This is such a great moment. It's raining, it's like 48 degrees outside. The water temperature's uh, 58, somewhere around there, and it, the bucktail bite wasn't on. So I was like, all right, we gotta go to something slower moving, like a glider. And uh, man, incorporating those pauses on the deep weed edge, and man, that fish crushed it. Crushed it. Um, the pike are in the weeds, the muskies are on the outside. It's, it's kind of cool, because if I'm starting to get strikes from pike, I'll just move out a little bit deeper. So the, I was hating the pike earlier, but I'm actually liking them now. So man, let's go get another one. Maybe we have a feeding window. One of the techniques that musky fishermen seldom use when working a twitch bait or a glide bait is to give the rod several upward twitches. Downward twitches are very common, but upward twitches with the rod allow the bait to rise in the water column suddenly, which can initiate a strike. Now, if we go back to episode one of the season, you'll see me working the rod upwards with a lot of upward twitches. On the pause, the muskie hammers the bait because it brought the bait from about four feet down to about one foot in the water column in a very short period of time. Now let me show you another video of some never before seen footage from an episode that I'm about to release. Again, I'm using the glide bait and I cast out on some timber and I work the rod tip down, twitch, twitch, and then I work it up once and bang, the muskie yes. absolutely hammers it. So again, another instance in which, in which the uh, upward twitches of the glide bait initiate a strike. Now let's go back to the fish that I just caught. You'll see me take the glide bait and cast it out and immediately start working the rod tip down to get the bait down. Now see the rod tip? I'm twitching it up, up. Now I'm gonna pause it. Now the bait is only about a foot or so below the surface of the water. It just rose significantly in the water column. Now I'm just gonna give it two downward twitches, one, two, and the muskie comes in and absolutely hammers it. And of course, that bait was so high in the water column that the muskie's fins came right out of the water when he hit it. So in sum, it's really important that when that bait is down in the water column, you give it several upward twitches, regardless of whether you're using a twitch bait or a glide bait, that gets the bait up in the water column and can initiate a really awesome strike. When the fall rolls around and muskies are putting on the feed bag for the winter, you see a lot of guys throwing big rubber. Obviously the go-to names are Chaos Tackle and Muskie Innovations. You know, they got the Medusas and they got the Bulldogs. And those are all really good, but Hellbender actually makes some really good rubber too. You can see uh, this hammerhead here. <clears throat> this is made by, uh, by Mike and uh, it does a really good job. You know, they have extra long tails and the rubber on these is a little bit softer. So you get a little bit of a different vibration in the water. These little fins on the side move. Uh, they got really big eyes and eyes are super important. So it's something a little bit different. I think just the tail action alone, uh, which makes up more than half the length of this bait, uh, is really awesome. You think that maybe this is a little bit too big to throw. It's literally the size of my entire forearm here. Uh, but it's really not because in the water it doesn't really look as big as it does here. Uh, it's a great option. There's a, a little bit of a smaller one here, uh, mimicking maybe more of a shad. And then you even have uh, this crayfish, which is pretty cool. Uh, obviously can do really well in river fishing uh, and, and in lake fishing too. So uh, just some alternative options for throwing rubber in the fall. Cripes! <laughs> I'm telling you, when that happens, it just, it could happen a thousand times and it still scares the wamahuma out of you. What's a wamahuma, you might ask? <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't tell you. This is literally like two casts in a row. That's three casts in a row. Three casts in a row. We got these little little whippersnappers. These little boogers. See if we can get another one here. 
No, nope, look at that. Fishing's dead. One more cast. One more cast, folks. One more cast. One last cast with the musky fisherman before he took several more. <laughs> and his wife called again. Where are you? Where'd you go? I was waiting for you back at the house. Okay. Enough of this. All right, we're back at the dock after a day of fishing here. Back at the boathouse. <laughs> Gotta see how the kids are sleeping. No, just kidding. The kids slept in the house where it was nice and warm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it was an interesting trip, right? We were on the lake, off the lake, because it's more of a family vacation than it was a fishing trip, but there's muskies here, so, of course, we had to go musky fishing. Um, and apparently they did weed harvesting in the lake. My brother just told me this a few minutes ago. He calls me up. And uh, so they took all the weeds out of the lake, but there was just a patch of them that we found and uh, the fish were stacked up into there. So that's where that big fish was. And we found another one early, earlier than that. And um, I'd say it was, a, it was a good day. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we will see you on the next episode. If you can make sure to subscribe to the channel, if you haven't yet. And uh, like the video, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Say hi on Instagram. Follow me, SG underscore angling. And uh, Facebook too. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. Oh, come on. Hit it again. Yes. Most little musky you'll ever see in your life. Also, just so you guys are aware, that musky was caught with a banana in the boat. So for all of you who say that you gotta keep your bananas out of the boat or else you get skunked, I say, that's a bunch of baloney. <laughs>